within the esteemed corridors of scientific research. An unfolding drama has captivated everyone within for years. Now the epicenter of this drama is two South Korean research labs, full of material engineers who made an astonishing discovery. They claim to have found the elusive room temperature superconductor. On July 22nd, these researchers released a pair of papers from the Quantum Energy Research Center. If validated, these scientific findings will usher in a new scientific revolution. Yet in the words of science, the dictum is clear. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. In response, physicists worldwide are rushing to recreate this experiment. The goal is to validate the remarks. Can this material really be made the way they say it can, and does it really have the properties they say that it does? But there's actually a third question, a layer of drama on top. Why are these research authors at odds with one another? What's going on behind the curtain? with the people. A superconductor is a scientific enigma. It's characterized by having a zero electrical resistance, and yet also an infinite magnetic resistance. And it holds the promise of unparalleled technology advancements. A successful creation and deployment of this technology might lead to extremely powerful computers, a perfectly efficient power grid, levitating trains, maybe it's even the key to making nuclear fusion a reality. But the path to this point in the story so far has been plagued with false prophets. Past failures, false starts, and retracted papers have been par for the course so far. Which is why a lot of experts are just plain old skeptical of this claim. The possibility of room temperature superconductor it could be feasible, but it also might just not be part of the laws of physics. In the past, notable figures like Renga Dias, whose study was actually retracted from the prestigious journal Nature, due to the dubious data in it, remains fresh in scientists' minds. Likewise, history is replete with ambitious claims that were debunked. Does anyone remember the 1989 instance of cold fusion? Yeah, electrochemist Michael Fleischmann is going down in history for actually not solving anything. And in the face of such historical failures, skepticism simply surrounds the latest claim of superconductivity at room temperature from a new material that is now being called LK-99. The initials come from two men, Suk Bae Lee and Yi Hong Kim. L for Lee, K for Kim. But most striking is this video, proving that they have it and it works and they can demonstrate it. There it is, levitating over Magnic. That is LK-99, supposedly. It was in 1999 that it was theorized that if you got the hexagonal structure the way that they say it is now, then you end up with a superconductor. So they've spent their careers along with other collaborators working on how to create the material with that structure. And despite the skepticism, the potential is tantalizing. Some argue that it's even comparable to Einstein's rethinking of space and time, Copernicus introducing the heliocentric model of the solar system, Pasteur's germ theory, Wagner's continental drift theory, Lemaitre's big bang theory, or the discovery of DNA. All of those groundbreaking theories led to a complete transformation of those fields, despite all of the doubt and ridicule they first went through. LK-99 is technically an alloy of lead and copper, and the creation has come from a systematic trial and error system of many different ways to combine into an alloy. To their credit, even if they're wrong, the scientists do have a long history of rigorous experimentation with these two materials that have lasted over a decade. But claims like this can't be accepted without serious scrutiny. So let's dive into the acrimonious rival between some of the paper's authors. So the lead scientists, Sukabe Lee and Jian Kim, and their former colleague, Yang Wan Kwan. But it's Kwan's abrupt departure that's got everybody wondering what's happening behind the scenes. He left the Quantum Energy Research Center at a time when you think he would be ready to bask in the glory of all the work they put in. And they didn't publish the final paper, they published their preliminary findings, and it didn't have a sufficient time to get peer reviewed. So it feels like they're kind of like rushing this out here, as if he's gone off to do something. That they think whatever he goes off to do might scoop the story or steal the credit, unsure. But with all this uproar, now there's a race for other labs to make sure that this is even something worth talking about. Because if it is, they're gonna fight over credit. You can be sure of that. It's definitely out there in the public conversation in a way it might not be without the drama. And that's great because this is the kind of thing that actually a DIY material scientist, somebody working in their garage might be able to work on. I'm really hoping that we see a bunch of like YouTube videos from those kind of people that really can do this. And even though I want to call it easy, it's not incredibly hard to replicate this paper from what I understand. These materials can just be worked with in a more natural way. You just have to follow the formula. So unlike 
Einstein who had to wait decade after decade after decade for like a perfect solar eclipse and the right equipment and like even that was high risk for verification. I think we're gonna see whether this is right if the data is stacking up or it's not gonna happen within months or at least years. And the material is already under study by many teams worldwide. And at least according to this video, some material exists right now. So can't they just make more of it and send it off to some research labs to prove that it can be built? The Korean Society of Superconductivity and Cryogenics requested a sample from the Quantum Energy Research Center for verification of this claim. So look, my gut instinct from basically one day of research is that this is going to actually work. However, the average person, even expert or not expert, is not on my side. Most people think that it will get debunked. This is the current betting markets right now. So the manifold markets, which are like crowdsourced betting markets that help you get an idea of how the public thinks about this, they're only giving it, as of today, a 36% chance that we will see LK99 room temperature, ambient pressure, superconductivity, preprint, replicated before 2025. That's both a lot longer than I suspect you'll need and a lot lower odds of success than I expected. So I would probably not go with my opinion. We should probably trust this betting market. But as of filming, it's August 3rd, but it's interesting because just two days ago, we had close to a 50% for a little bit. So certainly news can break and this could change very rapidly. So there's still hope that a future with unimaginable technology advances thanks to room temperature superconductors is on its way.